Thank you. The last walls of the old Dixon Elementary School fell today in Kingsport. It will have a new purpose, but our Christy Calcagno was there as former students brought to life the bricks one more time to honor their childhood memories. An old elementary school is coming down, but former students hold on to their memories. George Pierce has actually been visiting the construction site almost every day. He takes pictures and posts them to Facebook to show fellow students and family. And I've been able to, you know, I was able to walk through the school and, and show my kids, hey, this is where this happened, this is where this happened. From 1993 to 1985, Dixon Elementary gave students a fresh start on their education. But after years of failed restoration, the school closed its doors for good. Historian and former student Tim Mullen remembers teachers by name. The first grade teacher, Mrs. Ingram, whose classroom was right here. And she's one of those teachers that even to this day, when you see her, you just want her to smile and be proud of you. They say a picture is worth a thousand words, but for Dixon Elementary School alumni, pictures are all they have left. After the school closed, the building became a daycare, a church, and then closed. Mullen wanted to try and save it, but the cost was estimated up to $4 million. Once we really started looking at the school and seeing what it would take to get it to codes for this day, to really where it could be livable, usable really well, the cost was just too high. The old beloved school is giving way to modern condos. In Kingsport, Tennessee, I'm Christy Calcagno, News 5 WCYB. It's amazing how much can happen on one piece of land. J.W. Dixon came from a long stock of settlers, pioneers, and all-around good citizens. So much so that the newspaper gave his complete genealogy to satisfy the voters that once again saw that they were being rewarded with the right candidate to look after the 11th district of Sullivan County.
It's hard not to like a man that kept a handy store operating, worked with stone and gravel, and whose family was known for feeding the cow drivers as they passed by the big white house on the north turn of the old Bristol Highway heading for the livestock yard in downtown Kingsport. Kingsport had sprung up for the second time in 1917. Its first run had been in 1822 and pretty well fizzled by the end of the Civil War. Come the 21st century, it would be the only town that celebrated its 100th anniversary and five years later celebrated its 200-year anniversary. When the settlers headed into this area of land, you might say it was a bit of a land grab. Cherokee Chief Dragging Canoe from Chattanooga Way decided these squatters and uninvited neighbors needed to scram. An arrow, a tomahawk, a rifle was his choice of diplomacy. Unsettling to his leg, a bullet nearly ended his litter campaigns to clean up America. Just on the property the Dixons owned, to the left or right of the big white house that fed the cattlemen, was the area where marching musket settlers met slick maneuvering Cherokee warriors. Unfortunately, many a warrior family lost their husband, dad, or son, or sweetheart that day. This made this piece of Dixon property a piece of honorable memorial for the lives lost that fateful day in 1776. To the settlers, it opened the door to the west. To the Cherokees, it was not only a loss of life, but a loss of their second most important piece of real estate, the Long Island on the river. Jump forward to 1900s. J.W. Dixon grew up in this area. Hearing these stories, planning on making a few of his own, did what men do, found himself a sweetheart, shared children with the community, had his store, had his land, had his county, and had Kingsport next door. As Kingsport grew, so did the population in the outskirts. J.W. began to notice the growing number of children in the area and the inability for them to be educated properly due to the lack of a proper school. Thus, in 1932, J.W. Dixon began his self-inspired project to get a new county school in the Highland area on the outskirts of Kingsport on the East End. This was part of the 11th District of Sullivan County. But first, we have to get J.W. elected. It is August 1930. In July, the nation had seen the sculpted head of President George Washington at Mount Rushmore and the radio drama aired for the first time, The Shadow. Oh no, what evil lurks in the hearts of men, The Shadow knows. <laughs> R.B. Bennett took the office of the 11th Prime Minister of Canada, and there was a big battle for magistrates in the 11th District of Sullivan County in Tennessee. There in the first week of August in 1930, R. L. Hawk replaced W. F. Moody, who chose not to run again. September 1930, the new magistrates took their office. In March of 1931, just a few months later, R. L. Hawk was very ill due to an accident that had occurred at the Tennessee Eastman Corporation years before, but he had never fully recovered. By May, he was in critical condition in the hospital. On June 9, 1931, R. L. Hawk, being only 40 years old, ended this life's journey. Both R. L. Hawk and J. W. Dixon worshipped at the First Baptist Church. It was decided that a new election would be run in September 1931 to fill the vacancy left behind by the death of Squire R. L. Hawk. Names popped up quickly for the 11th District. This special election brought in J. Mac Bond H. O. Bunn, who was defeated in the 1930 election, 
J.W. Dixon, Thomas A. Howard, J.O. Phillips. Mr. Bunn withdrew as a candidate, leaving J.W. Dixon as the regular Republican nominee to fill the unexpired term of Squire R.L. Hawk, deceased for the 11th District, Sullivan County. Mr. Garrett, speaking for the committee, said, The party has always been badly split in the past on all political races, but the committee now hopes that it will act as a coordinated force in electing Mr. Dixon. The committee expressed the opinion that J.W. Dixon was a strong man, would make a strong candidate, and that the committee called on all Republicans in the 11th Civil District to go to the polls on September 10 and cast their vote for the nominee. In August, the advertisement appeared. I herein announce myself as candidate for magistrate in District Number 11 to fill the unexpired term of R.L. Hawk, deceased, and subject to the action of the voters of said district in an election to be held Thursday, September 10. It is my desire, if elected, to honorably discharge the duties of this office and to impartially administer justice in each case presenting itself for decision. My entire life has been spent in my native Sullivan County. This is my first appeal to the voters for any public office. Your vote and influence will be appreciated. J. W. Dixon, August 9th, 1931. One day before the September 10, 1931 election, J.W. Dixon stated his platform in the Kingsport Times newspaper. First, I believe the district outside the actual corporate limits is entitled to one of three magistrates. Squire Hawk resided outside, and the other two incumbents reside inside, while all my opponents in this race reside inside. Second, if elected, I will work unceasingly in the county court to relieve the congestion on the Lee Highway in Highland Park, and I favor sidewalks along the Lee Highway to be built at once at county expense. Third, the school situation relative to several sections surrounding the city is acute. I favor additional permanent school facilities to care for this situation. Fourth, I promise to work for better connecting and district roads. This situation is particularly bad in the Westview Park and in one or two other sections. Fifth, I've been a large taxpayer in the county for many years. I am close to the people and know their needs. If elected, I will try to represent every man woman, and child in the whole district at the best of my ability. J. W. Dixon. September 10th, Voters Day. One candidate remained and five others went home. J. W. Dixon, prominent businessman of Kingsport, was elected magistrate in the 11th Civil District of Sullivan County. And the newspaper added, we believe that Mr. Dixon is a thoroughly capable, efficient man with the best interests of his district and of his county at heart. On September 13, 1931, J.W. Dixon, winning his first ever public office, posted this gratitude, an expression of appreciation. Kingsport, Tennessee, September 12, 1931. To all who by your votes and influence helped make possible my election as magistrate, I desire to express my sincerest thanks. Yours for service, J.W. Dixon. Six years later, after winning his second election, J.W. Dixon was unable to attend the county meetings due to illness. One year after that, in just seven years of office, 
Paradoxically, for the second time, the magistrate of the 11th district would end his earthly life at a very young age. Funeral service for J.W. Dixon, age 42, well-known 11th district magistrate, were conducted this afternoon from the First Baptist Church. Squire Bill died yesterday, July 27, at his Highland Park residence after an illness of more than a year, a lifelong resident of Sullivan County and was engaged in the trucking business, instrumental in a number of progressive steps the county has taken in recent years. Besides his widow, he is survived by five children, three brothers, and two sisters. The funeral service for Squire Dixon held at Kingsport Thursday. Everyone was grieved to learn of his death. But until then, John Wilburn Dixon, Squire Bill, had a lot of work to be done those next seven years. Now what sort of very important things must a magistrate deal with in Kingsport during the 1930s? Well, first he had to let his constituents know that I have opposed fee grabbing for the past three years and I'm against it. That sounded good. Along the same line, kinda, reports of mad dogs and others under suspicion continue to come in from various sections of the county came a warning from Magistrate J.W. Dixon that the number of definite cases outside the city called for immediate action. The need for inoculation for all dogs outside the city as well as in the city. Well, now, he didn't put one foot in the grave, but both feet in a cemetery, making sure a new road from the Lee Highway, which is the Bristol Highway, which is now the Memorial Boulevard Highway, to the Pyle Cemetery, which is located right up Stagecoach Road off of Orbank Road, was completed and will be decorated Sunday in commemoration of those who gave their lives during World War. Now back to politics, kinda. Skunks behave well during hearing, but owner is fined. Two black and white undomesticated cats, skunks to you, were the principals at a trial conducted in Magistrate J.W. Dixon's court yesterday. On the charge of keeping wild animals, the same skunks, out of season. I didn't know I was breaking the law, though. I was tired of fooling with them and just about ready to turn them out when the law caught me. I didn't want to find that boy. Magistrate Dixon stated, I think that he was scared enough not to break a game law again. Hammond was $10 short because of his intentions. That was the amount of the fine. Meanwhile, the two little pole cats said nothing. They just blinked their eyes at their strange surroundings. One looked over at the other with a whimsical quirk of his moist nose as much as if to say, there's something queer about this mess. As a matter of fact, the whole thing smells. J.W. keeps his promises. Remember that promise where he said he's going to build sidewalks through Highland Park? Work started last week on the sidewalk to parallel the Lee Highway through Highland Park is being rushed to completion. The new walk is being put in largely through the efforts of J.W. Dixon, Magistrate of the 11th District. This part of the project extends from the corporate limit to F Street. Immediately upon completion of the North Walk, work will be started on the other walk, which will extend from the intersection of State Highway 81 to the Glenwood Church. In 1937, February, there was a footbridge under the sponsorship of Magistrate J.W. Dixon from Woodside Avenue off of the Lee Highway across the Raven to the new school for the convenience of pupils attending their school. 
Speaking of pupils, the magistrate hosted groups of students for such niceties as a picnic, a picnic held, held at a camp, camp on Holston River, River, about, about six, six miles, miles south of here. Of here. Several, Several out-of-town out guests, guests attended. attended. And never underestimate a mule. Mule kick cause brain concussion. John Shipley, employee of J.W. Dixon, is recovering at his home today from a slight brain concussion sustained when he was kicked by a mule. W.F. Green, manager of Dixon's store, said Shipley was shooing the front hoof of the mule when he was kicked behind the right ear by the animal's hind foot. The accident occurred about 5 p.m. in the barn lot of the Dixon home in Highland Park. Green said Shipley was rendered unconscious by the blow and did not regain his senses for several hours. Happily, Mr. Shipley recovered and the Dixon friendship was unscathed. As the mules say to each other when they're in the mule barn, if the shoe fits, kick him and make him wear it. What exactly is a legacy? A legacy is a law, a gift of property, anything handed down from the past, an applicant to or student at a school that was attended by his or her parent, an estate, a gift, tradition, bequest, birthright, device, endowment, heirloom, throwback. Consider a kernel of corn. It makes one ear of corn, which makes 500 to 1200 kernels, which makes more and more and more and more until all this from one kernel of corn. And that doesn't even count the products developed from that one kernel of corn. In 1931, three years into the Great Depression, the Dixon's third child, Charles, was ready to start first grade. Just in the direction of the city was the Highland community of Sullivan County. They had their own school, and Daddy took his son to begin the molding of an American. The school sent Charles home along with a half dozen other children, because they could not find a place for him to sit. The Highland School, now Jefferson Elementary School, was so crowded that the first grade was being held in an old shack of a house across from the school. So Daddy then took his son to a school in the other direction in the Litz Manor community. It was also full. By now, J.W. realized 12 to 15 students had no school to go to. Remember that third promise? I favor additional permanent school facilities to care for this situation. April 10, 1932. We feel that the county court of Sullivan County cannot be too highly commended for the unhesitating action which it took at its regular quarterly session last Monday in regard to the schools at Westview Park and Highland Park. The movement was led by Magistrate J.W. Dixon, who has made a careful survey of the situation. There are approximately 1,000 students in the outlying districts of Kingsport, with accommodations for less than half that number. One modern school should suffice nicely for the communities of Highland Park, Hillcrest, and Warpath. Providing this building is located at a site which will be convenient to these three communities. This consolidation means less expense for the county and better facilities for the students. January 9, 1933 the action taken by the county court of Sullivan County last week seems to pretty definitely assure new grade school buildings at Highland Park and Westview Park. The court passed a motion empowering the county judge to investigate the floating of $70,000 issue of short-term notes to finance the construction of the two buildings. We take this to mean 
that the court purposes to have construction work started immediately, provided the county can float the notes. We believe rigidly in economy, particularly in these times of economic stress. We do not regard as an economy to send children to a school in places like the buildings which are being utilized in Westview and Highland Park now. However, it is not economy to send our children to school under conditions that might impair their health and would certainly handicap them in the laborious work of getting an education. March 26, 1933, bids ready on new schools for Westview and Highland. After the conditions of the schools were pointed out to the Sullivan County Court during its January session in 1932, a committee of five magistrates was appointed to investigate the schools. Their reports at subsequent meetings of the court bore out the assertions of Magistrate J.W. Dixon more than a year ago that the schools were unfit for the children to attend. It has been largely through the work of Magistrate Dixon that the appropriation of $70,000 was secured for the construction of the two schools. Now, how did they get that money? How did they make money fast? Lots of money. Well, the city decided the only way was to have bonds. No, 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 no. Bond. Yeah, bonds. Finally, in 1932, Sullivan County, low on funds, issued bonds to build the new school. This was the first school built in Sullivan County with money from the sale of bonds. The thinking was, if the bonds don't sell, the school won't be built. Mr. Dixon pushed the sale of the bonds. Bonds are a good investment. The public buys bonds, the county gets cash. The public gets paid back the money with interest added. The county raises property taxes. Oh, no, 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 we won't get into that. <laughs> well, the next question was, where do we put it? So they had to go out and try to find some land, but land costs money. But J.W. Dixon had one simple answer. It's easier to give the land than to get magistrates to vote the money. This land had been in the Dixon family since 1888, some say. Let's take a quick look where J.W. Dixon came from. John Dixon came to the United States from England pre-1776. His name stood out in the Battle of Bunker Hill where he was taken prisoner. He married Rachel Howard after the war and had one daughter, Margaret, who married Dave Roller. She's a grandmother of D and W Roller of Kingsport. Well, they had one son and been per <laughs> And Magistrate John Wilburn Dixon was born May 22, 1896. Now, through various ways and means, J.W. became a happy homesteader on the Lee Highway with his 70 acres or so. Now, these are the seven acres that J.W. Dixon gave to be used for the school. It was prime land near Orbank, Lee Highway. If you look there, you'll see the home of the Dixon family. And if you look closely, you'll see the Lee Highway coming down making a turn, coming right on up, and a little right turn right in where the school's going to be built. Now what is it about this one piece of land that makes it so special? What exactly happened here? Well, let's take a look. Four, three, two. Well, Dr. Thomas walked this land in 1750. He specifically chose this area because he thought it was quite nifty. Next, Edmund Pendleton in 1756 
Got the first land grant in Kingsport, but what he really got was buffalo and sticks. So at first homesteaded by George Roller, he was happy with what he got. And his ancestor would be Annie Mitchell, a fine teacher, highly sought. And then this same ground was called Crumb Town or Manchester Town by Mr. Crumb, who in 1805 had a dream, but his dream didn't work out. Dream, had a dream, some dreams don't work out. Okay, dream, have a dream, and keep on dreaming. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. We still got to talk about Dragon Canoe. Let's go back for a minute. July 20th in 1776, Chief Dragon Canoe with his warrior men got in a few good licks. Leaving Eaton's Fort, the marching militia found they were on a very, very disadvantageous ground. Ooh, 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 ooh. Dragon Canoe had hidden his aggression behind the trees And the rest of this story they just say is history Dream, have a dream And keep on dreaming Dream, have a dream And keep on dreaming on Okay Okay Okay, that's the story. All that happened on this one little piece of land. <laughs> it was time to build. Time to plant that kernel. School board to prepare plans and cost estimates for new schools for Westview Highland Park and Bloomingdale. Bids on schools here are open. Work begins soon. Construction underway at Highland Park. Work on Highland Park's new school building is being pushed. Concrete work was completed yesterday. Highland Park School to open. Sullivan Squires invited to lunch. Every magistrate in the county, seven members of the County Board of Education also have been invited. Paradoxically, the nearby Hillcrest School was destroyed by fire. The school building was burned to the ground Saturday morning. And the new school appeared. Someday we'll build a home on a hilltop high. You and I, shiny and new, a cottage that two can fill. And we'll be pleased to be called. The first section was built in 1934, an extension was added in 1950, and the Cafe Gymtorium and a few classrooms in 1954. A wing or two, we will make changes as any family will. But we will always be called the folks who live on the hill. We can only count kernels and silos, but how do you measure legacy and heritage? Wonderful thing about land and legacy is there's no ending. J.W. Dixon literally farmed our curiosity to learn, our deepest desires to enjoy, our inspiration to share, taught us to use our hands and feet for the benefit of others. Buildings are made out of brick. Sidewalks are made out of concrete. Bridges are made out of wood beams. Yet the mind of a small child is made out of infinity. J.W. Dixon came from the rich resourcefulness of the pioneers. It was in his blood, but best, it was in his heart. The brick, concrete, wood were simply tokens of the mind. That is what he wanted for the children. During those difficult times of the Great Depression and smallpox, to name a few, the jack of many trades 
knew that if you build the child, you build the world. Mental, spiritual, and natural nurturing were all factors of the reality which produces eternity. Few people can look at a kernel of corn and realize the magnitude of its blossoming potentials. J.W. Dixon is just one man who did it for the Kingsport area and the 11th district of Sullivan County. But what happens once the tokens have stepped aside? What is still singing that legacy? The land. Let's look at one spring branch that came forth from that tree in later years with the song of the bird encouraging everyone. It was decided to turn the ravine behind the new school into a historical nature center. This was cutting edge. With the vast history that had placed its feet in this natural etching, it took no time for historians such as Harold Hal Spoden and his wife Muriel Clark Spoden, naturalists such as Ron Childress of Bays Mountain, to jump right in to this garden for everyone. I think J.W. Dixon was peeking over, watching as his little piece of property he had given to the people began to tell its secrets. The kind of secrets that everyone is allowed to tell. Welcome to the Dixon Elementary School. Nature Walk Park. Listen. Okay, that's the story. All that happened on this one little piece of land. 